and I can't stop looking at it. It's so pretty and so playful and I just love all of it. It's so good. I'm so excited about today's video because I have six amazing technical writing portfolios to share with you. I've already made a video about my GitHub portfolio, but I changed jobs this year and I went through the interviewing process myself and I had to revamp my portfolio. So I thought it would be fun to share my new revamped portfolio. And while I was thinking about this video, I thought it would be helpful to ask other writers to share their portfolios as well. So you can look at multiple portfolios portfolios and see how each writer does it and not think that my way is the only way to make a portfolio. So I asked people on the technical writing subreddit and the writer doc slack channel if they would be willing to share their portfolios with me and the portfolios that people shared are so 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 good and I cannot wait to share them with you. I also asked my newsletter subscribers to send me questions about portfolios so I will try to answer some of their questions in this video as well. Let's start with my portfolio. All my work that I've done at Cockroach Labs is on GitHub. I use GitHub as my portfolio, right? Anybody can go and look at my GitHub profile and get a sense of my technical writing style. But when I started to interview seriously, I realized that it's not the best experience for the interviewer because I have a lot of content on GitHub because I worked at Cockroach Labs for like four years. So I have a lot of documents that I worked on. And then to ask the interviewer to go look at my profile and find documents that are relevant to their job posting or go through a bunch of documents to see if my writing style is what they're looking for is a lot of work for them. And that's not fair. And also nobody would put in that much work for one candidate. So I wanted to make sure that I present my best work and I make it very, very easy for the interviewer to get a sense of my uh, capabilities. So what I did was I picked three documents from my GitHub portfolio. I picked an overview doc, an API doc, and a how-to guide. And the idea was that these three documents are some of my best work, and they also show a range of documents that I can work on. I wrote like a very simple Google document, and I wrote a cover letter for my writing samples, and I just like kept it very simple. I thank them for reviewing my writing samples. I link to the three documents, and then this was a specific requirement from one of the companies that I was interviewing with. They wanted to know what edits I had done after the documents were published, which is why I included this paragraph. I don't think this paragraph is necessary for other companies, but just wanted to give you some context about this paragraph is in there for a very specific company. And then I talked about what I did in my role as the staff technical writer at Cockroach Labs, what were the product areas I owned, and uh, the documentation process that I followed at the company. And then I finally linked to my GitHub profile in case they want to go look at more of my work. So that was my cover letter for the overall writing samples. Then for each writing sample, I wrote a separate cover letter, just giving them a brief idea of what the project was, what was the context for that project, what were the achievements, then the link to the original PR and the new file, like, if I had added like multiple files in a PR, I wanted to make it very easy for them to locate the specific file I was talking about. And so I linked to the new file. And then I also copy pasted the content from that file in this Google Doc. Now, one point to note here is that I can share the work that I did at Cockroach Labs because this work is already public. Cockroach TV's documents are open source. So all the content that I included in this Google Doc already exists in public in my GitHub profile. And I want to make it very clear that this is a very privileged and unusual situation to be in where all my work is public on a GitHub profile. But be very, very careful if the company that you work for, if they allow it, if they have it on GitHub, if your work is also publicly accessible on GitHub, I think that's okay, but be very, very careful and check with your company if that's okay. And that's what I did for the other two uh, documents as well. I just wrote like a brief overview of the context, the achievements, and linked to the PR and the files, and then copy pasted the content from GitHub to a Google Doc so that they don't have to go look for it. They just have it readily accessible right in this document. So this is my way of making a technical writing portfolio, a simple Google Doc with three of my best samples uh, with cover letters and explanations for each of them. But this is not the only way to make a technical writing portfolio. And to demonstrate that, let's look at Swapnil's portfolio. 
So you have met Swapnil on this channel in the last video. We did a live stream together about his life as a technical writer in Australia. You should go check it out if you haven't already. Very kindly shared his portfolio with me so I can share it on my channel. Swapnil uses github.io to host his portfolio. And my first impression of his portfolio is that you can tell that this is an experienced writer's portfolio. He's very aware of who his audience is, which in this case is the interviewers and the recruiters, and he knows exactly what information they're looking for, and he caters very well to their requirements. Just having a personalized GitHub website shows his comfort with technology, and this blurb at the top has just enough information that makes me want to keep scrolling and learn more about his skill set and then he uses the exact keywords that the recruiters and interviewers are looking for and for each of the projects he also does give context and the problem statement that they were trying to work on and how he contributed to the project and then he has this very nice visual and then the impact that the project had and then he links to the actual document this is just a smart way of demonstrating your technical writing skills because not just the actual writing sample, but the experience of getting to the writing sample caters to the audience, or the recruiters and the interviewers at every stage and just helps build confidence at every stage. And this is what I found very interesting. The contribution and the impact sections show that he is an experienced writer who knows what it is to work in the industry because as writers, we don't do an entire project by ourselves. We work with other people. We collaborate with other teams and other writers. So to call that out specifically uh, about your contribution to a project just shows that you are aware of how an actual technical writing team works. And then the impact is also a very interesting section to include because it again shows that you understand that technical writing departments exist to bring a value to the product and to the company. So being that business minded is a very important skill. I think his portfolio does an excellent job of demonstrating his expertise and his experience as a senior tech writer. Another interesting portfolio to look at is Matt Dodson's portfolio. I hope I'm saying your name right. I found Matt's portfolio similar to Swapnil's in the sense you can tell that this is also an experienced technical writer's portfolio and he also knows what the interviewers and the recruiters are looking for and then caters to their requirements. The difference however is the things that Swapnil and Matt choose to focus on. For example, Swapnil's portfolio, I think, focuses more on the technical writing process, whereas Matt's portfolio focuses more on the technological part of technical writing. Knowing Swapnil better now through the live stream, I can see how that presents his strengths because he is a very community-minded person. He runs uh, a lot of technical writing meetups. He is planning for the Writer Docs Australia conference. He is a very team oriented person. That is one of his strengths and he knows how to portray that to the interviewers and recruiters. Whereas Matt seems to be more interested in the technology side of things, like call hours about how he built this page. And then I think on his homepage, he has a call out about accessibility and wanting to improve the accessibility of his website. I think all of these things demonstrate his inclination towards technology and him wanting to work on really meaty technological uh, products. And I think that's a very interesting way of showing your strengths. Like even the things that he calls out are the tech involved and the authoring tools that he used and the docs as code pipelines. And that's exactly what I wanted to showcase in this video is that there is no right or wrong way to make a portfolio. All three of our portfolios, my portfolio, Matt's portfolio, Swapnil's portfolio, are for senior tech writers or staff tech writers. And all three of them have like similar approaches where we have cover letters explaining the context and the problem solved. All three of us did that, but we did it in such different ways and we focused on different things that are true to who we are as people. Each of us picked the things that interest us or things that are our strengths and each of us found ways to demonstrate those interests and those strengths in ways that will also resonate with the recruiter and the interviewers. So there is no right or wrong way to make a portfolio. You can personalize the portfolio to show your strengths and your interests. So don't blindly copy 
any of these portfolios instead take ideas from them take inspiration from them and think about what your strengths and what your interests are and how you can use these ideas to communicate your strengths to the recruiter if i stop this video here i know i'm going to get comments saying hey but all of these are senior technical writing portfolios what if i'm not a senior technical writer what if i'm a beginner technical writer in which case let me present janine's portfolio again i hope i'm saying your name right janine as far as i know is a beginner technical writer so janine's strengths are as a technical writer and a ux designer and you can definitely see that in this portfolio. This is a beautiful design. Never in a million years can I make a portfolio that looks as good as this does. And we also have a very well written and edited guide. And for that, we have a nice overview, which gives us context for the project. What were the goals for the project? And then you can click to see the actual instruction manual. Look, look how cute this is. Like you can tell that this person's strengths is designing and it just reflects in all of the work, right? This is probably the most well-designed document I've seen in a very long time. It's just so pleasant to look at. The color schemes, the layouts, the fonts or like the spacing between the fonts, everything is just so pleasant and easy to scan and read and the use of the callouts it's just so good and the writing content is great as well right it definitely demonstrates strong technical writing skills as well it's not just that it's a good document design but it also has very strong technical writing skills so it's not that the ux design or like the document design is overshadowing the technical writing skills but instead Janine is using uh, document design skills to amplify technical writing skills. So I, I thought that that was just a very, very smart way of showcasing all the strengths that you have as a UX designer and as a technical writer. I'm just so impressed and blown away by how good this beginner portfolio is. So if you're a beginner level tech writer, this is what you're competing with. I don't know if many people understand how competitive the beginner technical writing market is right now. And if you have portfolios like this coming in and this is what you're competing against and you don't even have a portfolio, yeah, I don't know how you get around that. Okay, I'll stop fangirling over Janine's website and I'll answer a newsletter subscriber question instead. Uh, so one of my newsletter subscribers asked what are their options to host portfolios. So we already saw three options. I host my portfolio on GitHub and also on Google Drive in the form of a Google Doc. So I'm going use github.io. And then Janine and Matt both have their own personalized websites. Another option that I learned about recently is a website called Journal Portfolio. This is a Redditor who very kindly shared portfolio with me and it looks so good. Again, I'm telling you, I'm so blown away with these portfolios. I wouldn't have thought of using a website like Journal Portfolio. I didn't even know it existed. But now that I know it, it makes so much sense because look how good this website looks. It's so clean. I also think it's pretty easy to upload things. You can uh, click onto one of the samples and then it gives you like this little box where you can put like the context and the overview and everything like the cover letter for the sample in this little box. And then you can click on view and then it takes you to the actual document and it also hosts the document for you. I think this is just a file uploaded to the actual website. So you don't even have to maintain a separate Google Drive and then link from this website. This website just does it all for you. How cool is that? So very, very thankful that Carlo decided to share this website with me. So that's another option for you to host your portfolios is use the profile like journal portfolio. And if you want to go the extra mile and absolutely blow away your interviewer and your recruiter, you can do what Sylvia did and make your own Linktree inspired portfolio. I came across Sylvia's portfolio on the Write Docs Slack channel and it's a Linktree which is so pretty and I can't stop looking at it. It's so pretty. And then it links to her articles on the internet. I think mostly on Medium, if I'm not wrong. And again, very, very strong technical writing skills, but demonstrated in a very playful, creative way, which gives you a very good sense of who she is as a person, as this very playful, very creative, very experimentative, very technologically inclined pop culture 
let me there's so many pop culture references in there so i don't know i, I just feel like this portfolio gives you a very good sense of who she is as a person and her technical writing skills and i think that's just a very very smart thing to do and she also has the template for the portfolio on her github account so if you want you can go and take her template and make your own portfolio in the form of a link tree but make sure that you credit her those were some of my favorite portfolios but i want to end the video on a subscriber question which is one of the most common questions i get about portfolios and that is most of my work related documents are proprietary so i'm not able to show examples on my online portfolio and this is a very very common question i talked about it in the beginning of the video which is what do you do if your work is not open source or if your company doesn't allow you to share your work samples with other companies in which case I think Daryl White has the perfect answer for you, which is make your own fictitious software product and then write about it. I feel it's the perfect answer to the most common technical writing portfolio questions, which are what if I can't share my work publicly? What if my work is not online or open source? Or what if I'm a beginner technical writer and I have no experience and I haven't worked at any place yet to have work samples to share? I think this approach applies to all of these situations just make up your own fictitious software product and write documents for it and yeah i'm just so grateful and so impressed and just blown away by all of these portfolios and i hope you found it interesting and helpful as well and if you have an interesting portfolio and you want to share it with us please leave a link in the comments down below i hope this was helpful and i'll see you next time